guys, welcome to the New Movie Thing Show, where we go see new movies in the theater. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm Joe Barrett, and this week we saw... Godzilla. Godzilla? Godzilla. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, this movie was directed by Gareth Edwards. This is only his second feature, mm -hmm. and his first American feature. Uh, his first feature was shot in Spain, I believe, and it's called Monsters. Yeah, and the sequel to that is coming out soon. You can check out the trailer online. I want to establish right now that we're going to generally talk about the movie, and then at the end of the video, we're going to do like a slight bit of spoiler territory stuff for anybody who's seen the movie. Yeah. And if you've seen the movie and you want to come back and watch our review, uh, just be careful around the end, and we'll give you guys a warning. It'll be a big spoiler. Then. Right. So, really quick, quickie reviews. My quickie review is, is this movie is very respectful to the Godzilla mythos. Mm -hmm. However, it's it's not a good movie, uh, uh, but is a good action movie. It's uh, it's a fun ride. Mm -hmm. It's you go there not expecting much in the uh, caring about the characters realm, but mm -hmm. you're not going there for humans. You're going there for Godzilla, and when you do see Godzilla, it's really fun. Yeah, so something that should be noted is this is definitely an origin of Godzilla story. Yeah, unlike some of the old past ones where it was like. Godzilla shows up with a couple other monsters and <laughs> yeah. shit goes down type well, of thing. You could even say that it's like a sequel to the 1954 Godzilla. Cuz yeah. they yeah, because the you know, they they established this in the trailer, so this isn't a spoiler that in 1954 they tried to blow up Godzilla mm -hmm. with nukes, uh, which is kind of what they did in the original Godzilla movie. So, mm -hmm. and it was all in Japan. And so yeah, you could kind of consider this a sequel to the original perhaps. But it seems like it's maybe a, a loving sequel, not an actual sequel. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, a detached kind of alternate universe sequel. Mm -hmm. um, the effects are fantastic. The effects are probably the highlight of the movie, yeah. hands down. When you see Godzilla running through cities, which is what you want to see him do, it's it's amazing. It's one of those things where you sit back and you go, "We've come a long way." Yeah, with the visual effects and yeah, stuff. It's yeah, it's crazy. He's he looks amazing, and I don't care about the like, oh he's bigger and fatter or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he was terrifying, mm -hmm. but also incredibly awesome. Yeah, he did have a scary look. Like, he's definitely intimidating, mm -hmm. not just because of how big he is, but he has, like, a fearsome look on his face. Yeah. I think the design is great. We've already kind of talked about this. I don't have a problem with the new Godzilla design, other than I think his thighs are a little big, but, you know, that <laughs> just might be You me. just want him to hit the Stairmaster for a little bit, Steve? <laughs> yeah. He's doing a lot of upper body while he swims, and he just leaves yeah. his legs like this <laughs> when he swims. He's got, somebody's got to teach him. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, Joe and I saw this in IMAX 3D, mm -hmm. which two not things. necessary. Not necessary to see it 3D, but IMAX I think is okay. Yeah, it's a big action summer movie. Those are always yeah. fun in IMAX, but as far as the 3D elements go, you can tell they didn't really plan the movie no. around it. And you can tell there's a lot of the movie as 2D composition as, mm -hmm. as opposed to them setting up shots for actual 3D. Yeah, it seems usage. like the 3D is just like an afterthought. Like the studio was like, wait a minute, you guys didn't shoot this in 3D? Godzilla must be in 3D. That's the whole yeah. thing right now. And but it's so, cool once you get into the city and there's some action stuff, yeah. the 3D does work there. Who stars in this movie, Joe? All right, we got Brian Cranston, because apparently he's a movie star now. We've got the impeccable Ken Watanabe, one of my favorite actors mm -hmm. ever. Aaron Kickass Taylor Johnson. We got the other Olsen sister, Elizabeth Olsen, <laughs> who's like one of those weirdly attractive people where you're like, I get it. I don't know why. Yeah. But I get it. I think the only person personally that I felt did a good job was Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston is the only one that keeps you engaged on an emotional level. You want to see where his journey is taking him. You want him to succeed in his endeavors. Uh, all the rest of the cast were kind of regulated to this look. <laughs> in fact, Joe, I think we should do our Ken Watanabe impression. Oh, poor Ken Watanabe. Okay, so you do yours first. Okay. I mean, I kind of just did it. Okay, action. Oh. <laughs> and then here's mine, ready? Oh. <laughs> We're giving him too much with the O's too. We really are, you're right. They like he just stared do off into the distance. Do some do some important time. dialogue to me while I'm Ken Watanabe. Ken Watanabe, we need to know the origin of this thing so we can stop it. You seem to know everything about it. We're kind of we're in a time crunch, Ken Watanabe's character. Can we... Will you just say something? This thing is ravaging San Francisco! Gojira. We've established that. So, with that said, you know, Kick-Ass ends up being a pretty important part of the movie. He's basically a lead in the movie. Right. Which is, for all intents and purposes, 
it doesn't matter. Yeah, he and doesn't. They don't give him a lot to work with. Right. I mean, the, the most impressive part about Kickass, Aaron Taylor Johnson being in the movie, is his transformation. He went from being a boy to a man. Yeah, he's playing this military Literally. guy and he's jacked. I didn't yeah. even know it was him until after. The I movie. didn't know either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, it, it, I guess it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. That it, whether or not there's fantastic actors leading a Godzilla movie. Because you're not going to watch actors in no. a Godzilla movie. You're going to watch Godzilla. Which is kind of one of the problems I had with the movie in general, which was mm -hmm. the movie focused just a little too much on the human characters. Yes, you and, will find yourself sitting around waiting to see Godzilla right. way too often. And you hear people say that the movie is boring and it takes a while to kick in, and that's not entirely true. I would say it's not actually boring, but it does take a while before anything really happens. It's it's slow moving, but again, I mean, you're you're building up to these climaxes where you get to see Godzilla do his thing, and when right. he's doing his thing and not swimming, he does a lot of swimming. So many, uh, so much swimming. It's it's really good. It's really fun. He, it, I think that this is the first time I can really say that the marketing for this movie was completely deceiving. Oh, really? Like, this is the most deceiving marketing campaign for a movie I've seen in a very long time. Uh, maybe since episode one. Because the episode one trailer was so good, and then you watch episode one, you're like, what happened? The trailer's better than the movie. <laughs> but this movie, they market this movie as a Brian Cranston vehicle with Godzilla carnage throughout. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a big mayhem action summer movie. And it turns out that, without going too much into spoiler territory, only about 40% of the movie is actual monster action. Yeah, that, I think that's no spoilers at all. That's no just spoilers. the reality of what you're getting into. It's right. a little slower than you're going to expect. Uh, but like I've said before, when you see the things that you went to the theater to go see, it's really fun. Yeah. You, it's really fun. You just wish there was more of it. And as far as the story goes, we don't really have any new, we're not breaking any new ground here for like monster movies. You don't need to, movies. it's a Godzilla movie. So you're going to see a monster movie which is based off of basically old school Godzilla movies anyways. Right. Which inspired all the monster movies of today, which uh, got, this movie takes a little bit from the newer franchises that were super established, but it's, it's fun and uh, I'm glad I saw it in the theater. With that said, let's get into our closing thoughts really quick and then we can get into the spoiler territory okay. stuff. So my closing thoughts are, it's not a bad movie, but it's not a particularly good movie either. I'd say don't skip it if you have any interest in the Godzilla mm -hmm. mythology at all. Go see it because you won't be disappointed when the Godzilla stuff is delivered because that stuff is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The set pieces are just great. Set pieces are great, the locations are great. Uh, just the story is nothing to get excited about. The characters are nothing to get excited about. Um, but with all that said, I'm excited to see, since this is an origin story, I am excited to see where they take yeah, the franchise. Yeah, it'll be really fun yeah, to see if they can. really fun. Make a lot of money movie. I hope you make a lot of money so we can see the next installments because right. I feel like the next installments they'll they'll be they'll hit the ground running. It'll be yeah, really and fun. I want to see other directors tackle it too, like the same kind of like Gareth Edwards. Maybe I don't know if he wants to do the next one. That's fine. I have no problem with it. The directing was fine for a sophomore effort. Yes. this is a great movie. And for a studio, imagine the yeah. studio pressures of a Godzilla yeah. movie. I think the director you know, did fine. Yeah. So and and with that said, maybe we could get a um, a Matt Reeves who directed Cloverfield to give it a shot at some point. You know, he's already gone off to do some other big major films. So I don't know, but I'm excited to see where the franchise goes. Mm -hmm. But with that said, my score for this movie, I'm going to give it a five yeah. out of ten because it is a halfway amazing good movie for me. Like it is the only half of it was worth it for me in the end. Okay, yeah, I give it about, I give it a six. It's a popcorn summer flick. I, I went to have fun. Uh, it didn't quite wow me as a movie, as a, like a, a well-rounded movie, but it, but parts of it were really spectacular. Mm -hmm. And for that, that's what I expect from a Godzilla movie. So okay. I give it a six. So we are not the only ones that went to the movie theater to see this movie on Rotten Tomatoes. The critics gave it a 73% score mm -hmm. and the users gave it 82%. So people are enjoying it. Over on Internet Movie Database, they gave it a 7.9. So it's getting pretty good scores across the board. Mm -hmm. So check it out. If, you're, if the, I think it's worth checking out if you even have the slightest interest. Agreed. Okay, so with all that said, it's time to get into the spoiler zone. Spoilers! Um, spoilers! So spoilers! What I don't do know what to talk about. Let's talk about the monster. Monsters first. <coughs> okay. Monsters. Basically, it's Godzilla versus the Cloverfield it's monster. Godzilla versus J.J. Abrams' creation. He's got to be getting some money. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Someone's going to get... It's Paramount more like the Cloverfield monster made love to a cockroach. 
And, and a bat. And a bat, and then this thing came to be. Yeah, it's just, it's very much like the Cloverfield monster. There's mm. no part of the classic Godzilla uh, mythology monsters going on here. This is an entirely mm. new creation. That being said, it worked. Yeah, it, it did worked. Work. I enjoyed the fight scenes between the yeah. monsters, and I like that they gave us two different monsters in the same family. Right. You had the male that which could fly and yes. was a little bit smaller. So they kind of went. They kind of like based it off of the insect world. Mm -hmm. So you got the male that could fly and was smaller, and the female that was huge, Godzilla size, yeah. and carried the babies and was more of a like a bruiser tank. Yeah, and I liked the kind. I liked the established uh, history of the creatures too. Like in the movie, they give it this kind of um, a similar mythology to the original Godzilla series, but the idea here is that even pre-dinosaurs... They've been around forever. Yeah, the, the Earth was full of radiation. They've been off of the radiation <laughs> deep in the Earth core. What you're not doing is... There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they the monsters... And so these creatures were just feeding off of radiation and getting big and gross mm -hmm. and crazy. And so a lot of these monsters went into hiding uh, as the Earth progressed, and so who knows? There's a limitless yeah. amount of these monsters in the world, which is really, uh, really cool. And I feel like there's so many love letters, not just to the original Godzilla stuff like I was talking about earlier, but to franchises that have come out recently. So we got the Cloverfield monster, mm -hmm. I feel like it was based off. I also feel like some of the design came from the bugs in Starship Troopers. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because of their, their legs. A and lot stuff. of, like, even the look of it, the yeah. head, the legs, a lot of it were uh, like the bugs from the the, uh, the other planet in that movie. Yeah. And then also, you were, you were commenting on on how much of it was kind of like Pacific Rim. Yes. Well, I want to get into that. Uh, yeah, you know what? Might as well do it. I and So if I was going to compare this movie to Pacific Rim, because you have to, it's another monster movie that came out fairly recent, mm -hmm. recently, uh, I would I consider Pacific Rim to be a better movie. I just feel like I cared more about the characters in Pacific Rim. The action sequences were way cooler. Guillermo del Toro is a seasoned director. He kind of knows what he's doing. And maybe it's not fair to say, you know, with Gareth Edwards doing Godzilla, it's not comparable, but I mean, there are so many elements of Godzilla that are just blatantly pulled from Pacific Rim, which is to say that Pacific you Rim is pulling from Godzilla. I mean, from. the reason why I'm saying blatantly is because in Pacific Rim, there's a creature that emits an EMP an electromagnetic pulse mm -hmm. that shuts down all of the electricity within a certain amount of radius, and the Jaegers can't fight it, so they need the Jaeger that doesn't use the technology that can like fight it. And I'm like, oh cool, that's a great way to solve a problem with like a monster movie. Well, Godzilla did that exact thing. The, pro the antagonist monster shoots an EMP and makes it impossible for uh, our technology. Gotta give it a reason the... for Godzilla to fight it. You I know? mean, I guess, but <laughs> EMP is just makes sense. It takes out all our, our defenses and our offenses. But it's just an action movie trope, a monster movie trope yeah. that seems to be overused I at get this it. point. The difference between Pacific Rim and Godzilla, though, is that you say the you cared about the characters yes. more in Pacific Rim because yes. Pacific Rim was a movie about the characters that happened to be in a monster infested yeah, world. Yeah, the monsters are Godzilla into... is a monster movie that just happens to be taking place around here. Well, yeah, and in the original Godzilla movies, the humans didn't matter. Like nobody gave a shit about the humans exactly. there either. It was all about when are the monsters going to fight, which is what people want anyway, and they mm. didn't really give us that yeah. in this movie. But when they did give us the monsters fighting, it was amazing. There were some really cool mm. Uh, just hand-to-hand -hand combat between these giants, uh, and that's when the movie was great. That's when yes. it excelled. The, the the kill scenes were amazing. The kill scenes were fantastic. There's a moment where you're like, oh wait, are you about to do that thing? Oh, from yeah. King Kong, you better not do that I, thing from King Kong. Yeah. And then they two girls and one cupped it. It was great. Yeah, if if Godzilla had gone through with just doing the freaking King Kong thing, I was just gonna get up and leave right there. <laughs> that's how bad I felt about it because I didn't want it. I had already seen it. Okay. Monsters out of the way, the last thing we need to talk about in the spoiler territory, something that is probably for me the biggest issue with the movie is we are we establish in the marketing that Brian Cranston is going to be the lead of the film. He's going to be the main character. He is. And he for is. For the first 20 minutes. And you really <laughs> care. You really yeah. do. You yeah. want to see him succeed. He, everyone thinks he's paranoid You're and crazy. In, you are incredibly invested in Brian Cranston's storyline. And then... Just out of nowhere, it's like, oh, he's gone. Out of nowhere, he dies. And all you can think is, is like, if this was a well-written movie, you would be like, shocked. You'd be like, whoa, they killed off the main character this early in the movie? This is amazing. But instead, it happens and you're like, wait, 
Wait, what? Yeah, it makes it a little harder to care about the characters, but now that I think about it, maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they didn't want you to care anymore, and they just wanted you <laughs> they to wanted watch you Godzilla. To... Well, but the worst part about it is, is I feel like the potential for this to be a dark night of the Godzilla series ended with Brian Cranston's yeah. character's death. I agree. And then when they replaced him with the like bad actor dude from Kick-Ass as our lead, like this is our lead now, yeah. it felt like when the new 300 movie came out and our lead was that guy that just seemed like a background guy in the original 300. Brian, when Brian Cranston dies, Godzilla becomes the lead. So yeah, you're either much. on board with that or you're not. Anyways, it was a fun movie. I'm glad yes. I saw it. Uh, let us know what you guys think of the flick down in the comments down below. And what else do we say to them at this point? That's it. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. There's a, yeah. an annotation bar with things to click on. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, 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 go and eat, uh, super, uh, super. <laughs> Is it just racism now? Coca-Cola. <laughs> there is a blatant Coca-Cola. Did yeah. you see it? It's yeah. on top of the building. It's, it's, ja Japanese. it's a Japanese one, yeah. In the in the uh, quarantine zone. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, the Mothra! <laughs>